Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you can see me because um, the lighting's not great. I'm actually in the car park of a Morrison supermarket in Staveley. Have a look over there, maybe we can get a shot of it, I don't know. I'll probably be better off holding the camera for this, I think. So I'm just on my way over to Tom's. Uh, welcome along to the vlog, by the way. He's brewing the coconut shy PA today and um, I thought I'd stop off on the way and pick up some emergency supplies. Now I'm on these horrible little things. This is metronidazole, metronidazole, which are antibiotics which you absolutely cannot consume alcohol with. Which is a bit of a bummer, right? So, I've decided to stop off at Morrison's and pick up some don't shoot me. Brewdog Punk IPA alcohol free. So we'll have a look what that kind of stuff's like. Focus on it please, there we go. So we're gonna give that a whirl. There's some here for Tom as well if he's uh, not fancying going on the sauce. And then also, because they had them in, and I thought let's see if we can mix it up a little bit and make it more exciting, we've got some uh, Brulo Lust for Life double dry hopped IPA weighing in at 0.0% ABV and this is a double dry hopped um, IPA with Simcoe, Citra and Mosaic so fingers crossed on that one let's throw that in the bag and we've also got um, a Pine Trail Pale Ale alcohol free from Big Drop Brewing Company do they tell us what, oh we've got Magnum, Mosaic and Amarillo in this one and it reckons to be 42 IBUs, so I'm looking forward to trying these actually. These are absolutely new to me because I'm not an alcohol free beer drinker usually. And then finally, this may be um, the wild card I think in the whole situation. We've got Big Drop Brewing Galactic Milk Stout at 0.05% or 0.5%. So very low alcohol content, 35 IBUs. Bramling Cross Hops, which I'd probably use in a milk stout too, because it's a nice, it's got a nice blackberry kind of note to it, hasn't it? So there we are. I'm going to continue to shoot across now because Tom wants to mash in and the time is getting on. So uh, we'll drive across. We've probably got another 10 miles to go, 5 miles to go. And we'll pick this up when we arrive at Tom's Little Brewery. We have arrived. I can tell you something though. Parking's terrible on Tom Street, so uh, I've got like a five mile hike down to his house. We've only gone and arrived. We're here, we've already mashed in and uh, done a few bits to camera, which you'll see on Tom's vlog, which no doubt you're either gonna go to next or you're coming from. So we're doing the coconut shy today and um, we're still figuring things out, I guess, with terms, in terms of water. We've just had a chat about that. But it looks to me, for all intents and purposes, we're just going to put the feelers out and just see how things go. You got the right amount of water in there, bud. It's a bit soupy. It looks, well, I don't know, it looks alright, actually. It looks alright. And then we're going to, Tom's going to get his pH meter out for the first time. And uh, it's all calibrated, I'm assuming. I saw the video, actually, so I know it is. And we'll have a look. If we're at 5.2 to 5.4, is the sweet spot. But I imagine we're going to hit 6.5. At least. Oh, easy. You know, if you go big or go home, as they say. <laughs> well. So we're about to finish the mash out. It smells like a gas leak. <laughs> <laughs> I apologise. Uh, 74 we're at, so we've got a little bit of time to wait until it gets up to 10, although, I mean, you could start transferring now. So what we want to do is try some of these postmodern classics. So we're going to start with the alcohol-free Punk IPA, which, well, I'm not hearing good reports already from my companion. So 0.5% ABV, you'd imagine They've used the same hops and everything. But we shall see. Wow, that is 
it's like a hot tea. Do you know what it tastes like? And I've had some of these before because there's a friend of mine called Chris Geary who makes, uh, I think that's his surname, I apologise if I've just pronounced it wrong. Um, he makes kombucha up in the oh, well, it does up in it. Scotland and this tastes like the hot kombucha that he makes but not as good funnily enough because obviously the hot kombucha is a fermented product but it's got no alcohol in it and this, his kombucha is hoppier than this but it fills a, a gap it's not bad but it's not great and on that bombshell <laughs> you enjoying them bud? yeah right I've set up oh, set up the camera to do uh, a non-beer review just a brief one because uh, we're just waiting for pots to boil and liquids to transfer you know the score it's brewing which is a lot of standing around and usually a bit of drinking beer, but today we're not able to do that. I am. Well, you can, mate, you're all right. So this is uh, Brulo Lust for Life Double Dry Up RPA, which is a bold claim, realistically. Uh, it's focusing on your head, Tom, and uh, not on the can. There we go. Well, so let's see. Last improvement from the last aroma. Yeah, so the Brewdog beer was shocking. I'd never buy it again. Even, like Tom said, even if he wasn't drinking, you just w it wouldn't be an option. You may as well have a soft drink instead. This one, however, has no alcohol in it at all. And it reckons it's a double dry up IPA. Citrus, with... Citrus. Yeah, so I'll go for it. Go for Sorry, it. mate. Simcoe, Simcoe Citra. Citra. <laughs> <laughs> and Mosaic. And there's a little bit more on the on the snoot. It's a bit nicer. Uh, it were very catty that brew dog, and it did smell like a gasoline. Yeah. So let's have a go on this one. That is actually. Oh, that's it's like um, a low ABV pale, but it's got some flavour to it, hasn't oh, it? No. It's got some malt notes in there. It's got some body to it. The other one was just thin and insipid and uh, I'm kind of regretting uh, associating it with the kombucha actually because the kombucha that Chris makes is ten times better than that brew dog is. Well yeah, I mean, I've, had, I've had the kombucha before and it is like, it has got the essence of a, a carbonated water beverage. Yeah, soda water. Soda water, yeah. Have this, you don't get any of that with this. No, this does taste like a beer. And um, I can't really show you what colour it is, but it's a nice lingering bitterness. It's, yeah. it's got beer colour, yeah, and it's got bitterness to it. The other one didn't have bitterness; it just had the um, the carbonic acid note from the fizziness. You can taste the malt in this one as well, which is the other one. You could just—it was like a hop tea. I don't think there was a suggestion of malt in the other one. Yeah, I think they've done. With that. Yeah, they've done all right here. I'm looking forward to the next two now. So stick around. Yeah, that is, um, that I would drink that if I were driving. There we go. Mm. Can at the wheel. So the boil's off and we're starting now to get the uh, whirlpool going. So I'm going to cook in the coconut. 400 grams coconut, which I've just crushed up into the bag. Look at that. Oh, bye. You ready, Harry? I'm ready, mate, yes. In she goes. This is where we hear the pump block up. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just getting some cheeky shots of uh, Tom behind the scenes. He won't be able to hear me on his camera because he's so far away and he doesn't have a dead ferret on it like what we've got on ours. <laughs> dead ferret. <laughs> oh, 
Smell it, Martha. So what point do these go in, mate? These? Yeah. Uh, they'll go in just before we put it into the fermenter around there. So yeah, that's really brought that down. Output at 70. Output at 60. Output at 50. Hey, come out! 94.3.1 Oh, that coconut's coming off now. Yeah. Now it smells, now the temperature's cooling down. Yeah, I would suspect you're about ready there, mate, I think. Right, it's climbing back up again. That's dropping them in there, look. Yeah. It's taking a bit of heat out of here, though. A bit cool. It looks cool on that dial, mate. I've got a good shot, then. The whole scene was excellent. Was it excellent? Apart from all that whistling in the background. <laughs> <laughs> so we're into another big drop brewing, alcohol free beverage. This one's uh, Galactic Milk Stout. And uh, it's got Bramling Cross in it. 35 IBUs. Apparently on the back, it can be either, don't know what this is all about, an, an alien invasion, invasion, an arsehole invasion, or a rocket to the moon. And it's closer to being a rocket to the moon apparently, so I'm, I'm pleased for that. So forget the notion, this is a beer style that has had its day. I could do with some glasses honestly, my eyes are terrible buddy. Instead, think of it as honeycomb covered chocolate because that's exactly what it tastes like. Rich, unconscious, and what? Un unctuous. Unctuous, unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> unctuous and absolutely decadent treat of a beer. I won't go that far. No, well. 91 calories put, per can, you may as well have a Kit Kat. What they ought to put there is, listen, for a non-alcoholic beer, it's not bad. I won't go as far as all that. Right, again, as soon as you put, put it in your mouth, it's got that, like, <laughs> minerally taste to it. It's got a minerally front end. I don't know why I'm stood off camera here. Uh, it's definitely got some notes of chocolate and stoutiness to it for sure. The roast is uh, coming through more of a smoky on the back. Yeah it is a bit smoky. Than roasty. Yeah it's got an ashtray edge to it. Campfire. Campfire yeah. But again would you drink it as an alternative to a soft drink? Yeah, probably not. It's not milky enough. No and it's not refreshing enough either. You know, you have a beer and you either get refreshment from it or a buzz, right? This offers neither. That, that second one we had was the winner. That, yeah, it was. No, yeah, the second one. Second one, yeah. The brew dog for me was the worst. Yeah. The second one, next. Then the, uh, I didn't actually do a video on that third one. Amateur. I think I squashed both of cans up. Well, you have to look on Tom's channel for that because I squashed both of cans up. This will make you. Well, this makes my toes curl, bud. It's more precarious than the last one. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> Tell you what, I know what to do. Yeah. It's not one thing, it's another.
This is how professionals get things done behind the scenes. <laughs> of course we've run out of what's it? Cheesy what's it? We've run out of juice mate on camera so I've got to plug it in. Oh that's alright. So you're going to poison me before I leave? You're poisoning yourself mate. We're going to take a risk and we're going to have a, a snifter of uh, the Idaho 7 New England IPA, as it yeah. seems to be. Yeah, it now. seems to turn out. What is that recording? That's recording, right. Alright, fellas, welcome back. Now, before Harry shoots off, we're going to treat him to some, uh, to some Idaho 7 <laughs> New England some IPA. Poison. And uh, He's, he's risking it all for this, aren't you? I am. Oh, sounds like kegs about to kick, mate. Better not be. <laughs> Is it that good? <laughs> Certainly looks the part, doesn't it? Look at that. It's the right colour. It's got a lovely tight head knitted onto the top. It's pouring well. Oh, it's citrusy, that on the nose, not that I can get a, a deal of it through this foam. I don't know what happened there, but mine turned out perfect. <laughs> Alright, so when would it be? Three weeks ago, four weeks ago? Close to. Four weeks ago. Yeah. Harry came over, we, we christened the new place, we did the Idaho 7, which is the recipe you've done at your place. Yeah. But we increased the alcohol. Yeah, so what's this at? Six. Six. Yours is? 3.8, I think oh, it is. So it's double. Yeah. Well, I've been drinking this, obviously. Well, no, not quite. No, but <laughs> you, you know what I mean. <laughs> and uh, it's quite chewy. Right. So. What did it finish at then? I don't know. You're not taking a grab no. reading. It could be still going. Oh, <laughs> right, cheers. Let's have a go. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Wow, I'm getting a lot of uh, peach, I think, off that. Peach or passion fruity, mango-y kind of note, but there's a there's a lot of body left in that bad boy, isn't there? Yeah. Chewy, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I don't think that's fermented all the way out myself. No? I reckon there's a, well, it might have finished. What yeast did we put in? It was that saturated, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, put a lot in it. Well, that's meant to be a fruit bomb yeast, you see. Uh. I don't know. You should take final gravity readings, you know, mate. We'll be able to be. Um, I forgot. Doing this from a much more informed position. Shall I do one then? Well, that's, you can't really on that, can you? Why? Alcohol affects the reading on the uh, refractometer. You need a hydro and you'd need to degas it. Uh, no point wasting it, is there, mate? We could try it. We'll degas it and stick it in there. Yeah, go on there. Tempted now. Uh, yeah, you need to see where she is. But she, that's got a heck of a lot of, well, sugar left out. It feels like sugar left, but is it sugar's left? Or is it actual body from, well, the brew itself? It has got a bit of an alcohol note to it though as well. Do you notice that? Mm. That looks good, but maybe that's because I've not had a drink all week. And in comparison to those alcohol-free beers that we've just partaken in today, this is on a different level altogether. So in order for us to get a relatively accurate reading, we've just got to knock all that CO2 out of solution. The only drawback of doing this is you create a heck of a lot of foam, so it's not a quick process. Well, this is what we do at the brewery. So whenever we have to take a reading out of a tank, whether the beer's finished fermenting or not, we still have to knock all of that CO2 out of solution because ultimately it affects how the hydrometer floats in the sample. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think you're about there, mate, at that. We normally do about 10 to 15 back and forths. And then, yeah, you're gonna have a weight on your hand for this. Oh, it sounds like you're pouring a really nice cup of tea, doesn't it? <laughs> Save some, mate, let it settle. You know, next time I come up, I'm not going to wear these squeaky boots. It keeps <laughs> crashing. Oh, dear. Can you hear her every time I move my foot? I'd say at best, she's at 10, 12. Mm -hmm. Oh, dear me. That's the alcohol free beer size. So what do you think? 10, 12, what did we want it to finish at? Can you remember? I think mine finished a lot lower than that. Do it. I could be wrong. This is the trouble, I've not brought any reference with me, so I don't know. I could be talking absolute nonsense, which wouldn't be the first time, let's be fair. Yeah, well that doesn't scream like stalled fermentation. No, though. certainly not. To me. No, I'd be intrigued to uh, I see mean, what, have a look what mine finished at now, if I went back and had a look at the sheet. Did, did you keep the sheet for that one? Mm. Oh, well, that's it, is it? Oh, well, I brought this over, didn't I? So this would have been target. 10, 11. Oh, it's, it's on the fucking money. Yeah. 10, 11, 4. And I said 10, 12 at best, so... It's finished. All the way. Yeah. I'll show you, because I might be able to just unhook you quickly. Um, she's in. We just did a video about the tilt. So we've we've got the tilt in there, but she's looking mighty fine. Christening the. Uh, did you put some pressure on it? No, it's faulty in it. Oh, it's reading high. Yeah, but uh, christening the the new fermentation chamber. It was actually nicer carrying it in there than dropping it down into the. Yeah, no bending. No of the bending. Pipes. No, but anyway, fellas. Um, Oh well I forgot to sign out folks when I left Tom's uh, so I suppose you better go over to his channel and uh, see him do his boopy thing and whatnot. but that's it for this video I hope it didn't bore you too much it was more behind the scenes than the video itself on the brew day because obviously that's what Tom was going to do on his channel so make sure you go across there and check it all out and keep liking, keep subscribing here for more of the same coming along very soon we'll see you on the next one